you underground. And I know that it's not the 70s anymore, but hitchhiking is alive and well in the aquarium hobby. Hitchhiking's got a pretty bad rap, but not every hitchhiker that you might find in your aquarium is going to be necessarily bad. In this video, we'll go through the anemone hitchhikers that you could find in your aquarium and also the starfish hitchhikers that you could find in your aquarium. And you can get hitchhikers in a multitude of different ways, but the most common ways that people find hitchhikers in their tanks is basically by bringing in live rock and coral. Those are like the big things that you'll find a majority of your hitchhikers on and that can really lead to some problems if they are bad hitchhikers. So the first category of hitchhikers we're going to talk about today is the anemone hitchhikers. We're going to focus on Aptasia anemone, Mahano anemone, and also we're going to focus on Ball anemone. So the first and most common type of anemone that you're going to find in your tank is the Aptasia anemone. And it is every aquarium owner's worst nightmare when it comes to having a type of outbreak in their tank. The problem with this type of anemone is that it has the ability to multiply rapidly and it can compete with other corals or fish in your tank for food and space. They also have the capability of stinging. They could have a negative impact on the neighbors in the tank with their stinging ability. The Aptasia anemone can be identified because they kind of look a little bit like a mini palm tree. They have a polyp body and an oral disc that is surrounded by tentacles. If you find some Aptasia in your tank, you want to make sure that you do not try to manually remove it in any way because that could make your outbreak even worse. So for Aptasia, there are several different methods of removal. So some of the chemical removals you have are Red Sea's Aptasia X, Frank's F Aptasia, and caulk paste, which is calcium hydroxide. When it comes to fish and other natural methods of getting rid of your Aptasia, you've got file fish, you have peppermint shrimp, you have the copper band butterfly fish, and the one that we like here at Salty Underground is the Bergia nudibranch, which are the only thing on this list natural wise that only eats Aptasia. Now we're going to talk about Mahano anemone. For identification of a Mahano anemone, they have thicker and more rounded tentacles. And they also tend to be a lot more colorful than the Aptasia. If you have a Mahano anemone, the problem comes that they can also spout out spores. So you want to be as careful as you can when trying to remove them. And one of the other options that you can do is to use caulk paste, and that will help clear up the Mahano anemone problem. Aptasia X is also a good option for getting rid of Mahano anemones, as well as peppermint shrimp for a natural route. So now let's talk about the ball anemones. These actually aren't anemone, but they have it in the name. They are actually a type of mushroom coral. They're not harmful, and many aquarium owners Think of this as a cool new addition to their tank. Their tentacles are thin and spindly, but they do have a signature ball at the end of the tentacle that will clue you into if it is a ball anemone or not. They do have the ability to sting neighboring corals, and they can also eat small inverts such as bristle worms or small snails. They don't tend to multiply as fast as the Aptasia if the nutrients are kept in check. If you do desire to remove these ball anemones, your options are caulk paste and the copper band butterfly fish is a natural remedy to get rid of your ball anemone. Now let's move on to the starfish category. And here we're going to focus mainly on two different types of starfish that can be considered pests in an aquarium setting. The first is the Astria starfish, and then the second one is the Brittle starfish. In most cases, starfish are one of the good hitchhikers that you may encounter in the aquarium hobby. The Astria stars are generally harmless, and they'll feed on excess algae that is in the tank, 
so you really don't have to worry too much about it. There are a couple reports saying that the Astro Stars will go after some coral, but that's a little bit up for debate in the aquarium industry. They do reproduce fairly quickly. They can do it asexually by cutting their body in half or taking off parts of them to grow new starfish. So you'll many times see a Astrea star that has legs that are shorter than the others because they have taken those off to reproduce into other starfish. So if you do desire to get rid of your Astrea stars, you can either manually remove them, which it's not too hard to do, or you can also purchase a Harlequin shrimp who only eat starfish and they will take care of that problem for you. Then we have the brittle starfish. This starfish can be identified by its classic tendrils on its arms. They kind of look like bristles on a toothbrush. These are also considered to be a good hitchhiker and mainly because what they do is they stir up the sand at the bottom of your tank and they eat the debris. So that is it for the first video in our hitchhiker series. We have 12 different categories of hitchhikers that we're going to be going through in this series. So we got two down and we'll have to see how many videos this ends up taking us. So that is it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you guys for watching. And remember, if you're not already subscribed and you'd like to be, please hit that subscribe button down below and give this video a like if you liked it. Thank you guys for watching and have a great day. Bye.